this is one of the, so for most of this chapter, we focused on double solid interference because that's the um, setup where you have an interesting geometry, uh, the path length difference that leads to the phase shift comes from uh, the geometric con considerations. And um, in, in the chapter, we also cover other cases of interference. This is one of the, I think, other two types of the thin film interference. And with the thin film interference, the geometric consideration is still there. But there are two additional things you need to worry about. One is that um, as you're considering the geometry involving the film, oftentimes the wavelength of light in the film would change. So you have to take that into account. And two, you have to, um, there are potential uh, phase shift on reflection. So you have to take that into account. So let me uh, draw this, I guess. Uh, let me draw the film with the vertical lines. So uh, what, we are, what it's describing here, there's a thin film in air. And even though my hand is shaking, let's say it's about the same thickness throughout. So they are giving me the end of 1.38 and it's a surrounded by air. So N equals one here and N equals one here. Uh, what is the minimum thickness of this film such that the reflection of normally incident light with some given wavelength is um, the reflection of this is minimized. So they are looking for destructive interference while most other wavelengths are reflected usually. Oh, I think this description what it means is uh, in this setup, there's actually a kind of trivial solution. If all you are looking for is the uh, minimum for destructive interference. Uh, when you go through the result, um, what you will find is that if I make this a thickness D equal to zero, that will actually lead to destructive interference because of phase shifts. But, but for that condition, uh, all the other wavelengths are also destructively interfering. So, so um, the question is uh, forcing you to go away from this situation so that your, the thickness, the minimum thickness is not equal to zero. It's some uh, distance after that, and that will be wavelength dependent. So, um, so yeah, let me finish drawing this picture here. Uh, with this instant light, it has one reflection from this interface. And there's a second beam, or uh, there's a beam that's uh, uh, transmitted through into the film, and it will get reflected from the second interface. So you are looking at the phase difference between beams one and two. So. Uh, the task to do is here is, okay, let's collect all the phase differences. Phase difference between beam, uh, let me label this as a, phase difference between beams one and two. So as soon as uh, I say phase difference, uh, two things you can kind of ignore are the phase changes that occur before the any of the reflections because they're common and any of the phase changes after the reflection and uh, beam to emerging from this surface, because these are common paths, any phase shifts that occur in those paths are shared. So really there are three places that could uh, give uh, rise to a phase change. One is a reflection here, reflection of beam one, and the other is the reflection here, reflection of beam two, and the final and the most important is this path uh, traveled here. There's some delta x travel that will lead to a phase shift. So I will um, add all those three considerations. So let me just label them A, B, and C. So on A, I have a reflection. So this is one of the things that you just have to know, you just have to know from reading or listening to the lecture that when light reflects from a boundary, 
whether there is a phase shift or not, it depends on the relative order of the index of refraction. When it's reflecting from a boundary that goes from the low to high index of refra like refraction, <laughs> then there's a pi phase shift. So for A, I'm going to have to include a pi phase shift. Um, oh, oh, I guess I should write down. So what this is going to end up looking like is a uh, amount of phase shift for beam one minus <laughs> amount of phase shift for beam two. Uh, the order doesn't really matter. Uh, the sign here is not something that ends up mattering. So amount of phase shift for beam one, it's just gonna be that uh, component part A, which will be the pi phase shift. And then that's it for beam one. The, everything else is common between one and two. So there's no, uh, no uh, change of phase to worry about minus the amount of phase change that can be attributed to the points B and C. So on B, the beam is reflecting from the high index of refraction to low. So, so with that shift, there's no phase shift going uh, on reflecting from this boundary. So there's gonna be zero phase shift on reflection but there will be phase shift that can be attributed to this additional distance traveled. This additional distance will be twice the thickness. So, um, so uh, how do I, <laughs> let me write down the whole expression for the phase shift on uh, for that uh, part C. So what it's gonna be is, it's going to be the, um, so let me build it up this way. I'm going to first going to count the number of cycles of a wave. So it'll be the total path. Let me label that delta x divided by the wavelength, um, wavelength in the material. Uh, that's going to give me the number of cycles. Now, in the way I'm expressing these phase differences here, I'm doing it in radians, so I have to convert cycles to radians. So it has to be multiplied by two pi. Um, okay, uh, let me finish building this expression kind of in place because some of the expressions I'm writing down like a delta X and lambda N, they are technically not given quantities. Um, so because I'm, well, they are not given quantities and they're not the quantities that I'm looking for directly because I am looking for this minimum thickness let me label that D. So it's one of the quantities I'm interested in and it is related to X, but it's related as two times D because this beam travels through this thickness twice. So where I have Delta X, this should be two D. And the wavelength in the material, I am given the wavelength in vacuum or um, uh, I guess it doesn't explicitly say that's wavelength in vacuum, but that's what I'm gonna assume because that's the common convention. So, and the with that index of refraction, you can go through the consideration that we did in a, another question of how with the index of refraction, the speed of light changes from C to C over N, and given that the frequency of light remains the same, there's a, a implication on how the wavelength changes. It goes from the wavelength in vacuum to that divided by the index of refraction. Here, I'm just gonna use that result because there's more math I need to do. So I'm gonna say, all right, the wavelength here that's relevant is the wavelength in vacuum divided by N. All right, I, I think I have all of that built. So let me, uh, I guess there isn't really much to simplify. So let me just leave it here for now as I finish writing down. So for part A, what I'm looking for is where I have a destructive interference. So I need to say, I need to specify that the phase shift I get here is consistent with destructive interference. So um, with the destructive interference, um, what I remember is I want my, phase shift to be on n times pi, where n is an odd integer. 
So here, I think I can make it easy for myself because I am looking for the minimum thickness. So I'm looking for this delta fit to be as small as possible. So I'm looking for this n to be equal to one. So I'll just say this whole thing equal to pi. And I think that's where you see if we didn't specify that most other wavelengths are reflected usually, then you can see, oh, I can say my d is equal to zero and I have pi equals pi. <laughs> so, oh, wait, wait, wait. So I think uh, what this means is, oh, I can't just say, um, all right, all right. So I do need to say, all right, this is, uh, <laughs> this is some old integer times pi. And I'm gonna just uh, do, in order to do this quickly, I'm just gonna consider a few possibilities. So if n is equal to one, then that's, you know, pi equals pi, d is some, um, d is zero. And I don't think I want that. So, and uh, the way I wrote this with this sign here, I think I'm saying that if I let n go larger, then when I do the algebra, I'm gonna get negative d and that's not gonna work. So I think what I want this value to be is equal to uh, minus one. Then I think I can finish the algebra and when I finish everything, I'll get a positive d. So, um, so I, I recommend that you uh, kind of consider your equation and look ahead to what the result is going to be before you, uh, before you commit to a particular old integer multiple of pi here, it has to be minus one pi. So with that, let me uh, write up the cleaned up version of the equation and then solve for d. So it's a pi minus uh, four pi d uh, times n over lambda naught is equal to minus pi so let me put this uh, term with a D by itself on the right-hand side, moving everything else over. Then I get, uh, and then flip them around. <laughs> then I get uh, four pi D N over lambda naught is equal to two pi. Okay, I think I can solve this for D fairly easily. Just gonna do that in my head and say that D is equal to uh, lambda naught over 2n. All right, I, I think I did that correctly. So yeah, um, plug in the numbers, uh, lambda naught over 2n, and that should give you the answer. So part B is where you have some interesting changes. And um, so uh, let me make the changes in place. I think I can do that. So the change that part B is making is it's saying, okay, the same film is placed on a flat and this is the important part, n equals 1.5 surface. So the change I'm making here is that, let me say on the right-hand side, instead of n being equal to one, now it's n is equal to 1.5. And that causes an important change to the relationship here. Instead of, um, the index of refraction on the instant side being uh, larger, index of refraction on the instant side is now smaller. So on this uh, reflection B, now there's a pi phase shift as well. So, uh, so I'm doing this for part B and I'm considering the same phase of difference and if reflection on A hasn't changed, I'm not touching that. Now reflection on B has changed instead of this being zero here now there's gonna be a pi phase shift. And overall um, effect of this is gonna be that this pi will be canceled out by this pi. So uh, if uh, the phase shift happens on both surfaces, then it gives you the same physical result if a phase shift didn't happen on either of the two surfaces. Um, so, but, but that's the important part. So, and with that, um, I, I think the path length difference part, part C, that remains the same. It's still the same material. It's still the uh, same relationship between the thickness of D and the, the path length difference. So I can leave that alone. Um, and one thing I would like to check is if the N I chose before, the old integer that I chose before still makes sense. 
it looks like the left hand side is gonna be negative. So yeah, I think n equals minus one it still makes sense. Yeah, it can't be zero because zero is not odd, it's even. Um, yeah, so I'll keep my n as a minus one. So the right hand side is still minus pi. So with that, the corrections here are, uh, well, this pi is gone, uh, minus four pi dn over lambda n. Okay, so, you know, get rid of the minus signs. Then here you get just the pi with no two. So when you solve for b, so again, I'm just doing in place change for the answer to part b, uh, it should be d is equal to uh, lambda not over, uh, not two, but four over four n. And so, so that's the answer here. And I would uh, ask you to be uh, cautious um, on uh, potentially overgeneralizing these results. <laughs> um, like I don't want you to try to derive a general expression, uh, like going from, because here the relationship looks so simple, you know, it went from one to where it's not half that. And I just don't want to say that uh, there are so many things I can change where there's no such relationship necessarily. The thing that I want you to always start out from is really this relationship. Figuring out the phase difference between the two interfering things and relating that to a condition on the phase difference based on whether it's a destructive or constructive interference. If it's a destructive interference, it's the old integer multiple of pi. If it's constructive, it's even integer multiple of pi. And so, so you know, no association like this. <laughs>